Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it gives me great pleasure to make a brief contribution on the Pensions Amendment Bill 2024. The bill, Mr. Speaker, seeks to amend the Pensions Act by stipulating a minimum monthly pension of $725. Of Mr. Speaker, I have noticed that on every occasion we come to this House for serious business to elevate the living conditions of the people of this country, the leader of the opposition and his sidekick only try to change the subject. And for the past approximately one hour, the member for Kasri Central was trying to rescue the leader of the opposition from the arguments that he made, which is not even of marginal relevance to what is being discussed. And the member for Kasri Central, Mr. Speaker, was quite correct. When he asked the member for Schwazel whether it was COVID that caused them to go and build a road in excess of $13 million for DSH, was it COVID that had them to relocate Beausajou and purchase lands in the vicinity of Volette or wherever it is for $13 million? Incinerators for about $20 million. And I can go on and on, Mr. Speaker, in articulating the wastage. And then the member for Vieton North, Minister for Health, reminded me that they said there was a shipment <laughs> of some container of bananas going to France. But when it got to the UK, the COVID virus ate it or whatever they said, Mr. Speaker. I mean, this is absurd, Mr. Speaker. The leader of the opposition spoke about fuel prices. We do not produce gas in this country, Mr. Speaker. We are not involved in drilling for oil in this country, although I know soon we will discover oil off the coast of St. Lucia. I know that for a fact. And then the member for Beaufort, Beaufort South will celebrate. But I am convinced, Mr. Speaker, that there is oil close by. That is it. That is it. And I say you're going to celebrate when they finally discover the exact spot, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, at the time the leader of the opposition was prime minister, oil prices were at an all-time low. All-time low. However, they kept fuel prices artificially high, Mr. Speaker. A man who plunged the economy of St. Lucia in a, in a recession in 2019, prior to COVID, when the world economy was growing, comes there and give us advice. Now, if we want advice to mess up the economy, we are going to call upon members opposite. If we want to engage in wastage, we are going to call members opposite. But we are engaged in trying to be prudent with the resources of this country and to utilize the fruits of the labor of the people of this country for their own upliftment, Mr. Speaker. And so, there is no need to spend an abundance of time on the route that members opposite have actually tried to set for us. But I will return to the center line of the route that the Prime Minister, the member for Cassius East, is on where the people of this country is concerned. And that is to put the people of this country first. Mr. Speaker, the amendment would effectively result in all pensioners who currently get a monthly pension of less than $725 receiving a monthly pension of $725, effective August 1st, 2024. So you see, that's the good thing. Moving from $300, people who, who, who retired a long time ago getting $300 a month. We are trying to cure that anomaly by ensuring that they get a minimum wage. And then we will see further in, in this debate how the Prime Minister intends to deal with this matter moving forward, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, Justice and National Security, announced this policy measure in his budget address for fiscal year 2024-2025, which was delivered on April 23rd, 2024. And he asked, the leader of the opposition asked, why now? You stayed in office for almost six years. You never even thought of it. You never attempted it. But you ask the current prime minister, why now? Why now? That's the first time the member for Kaswis is his prime minister. So that's why he has to implement it whilst he's prime minister. Building on the foundations laid by the former prime minister, and that is the member for VFO South. We, when we are in office, we deliver to the people of this country. We try to attempt to address the pressing but legitimate needs of the people of this country. We don't mamagai people, we don't simegwen, we don't gallery with the people of this country. And of course, I understand why the opposition has to change the subject. Why they have to lash out? Because we are taking measures to ensure that the people of this country are better off. And they would never want to return to the days of the United Workers' Party under the leadership of the member for Miku South. Can you imagine during COVID, where in excess of $300 million were given to attend to the people of this country that were suffering because they had to close down their businesses? You all took it and then wasted on preparing for elections. And people were gasping for air. Only approximately $7 million was used to distribute to their friends. And the majority of the people of this country suffered. And then all of a sudden, they come there and try to be the champion of the poor. Since when you all care about poor people? You all proceeded to say that you reduce the VAT from 15% from to 12.5%. Because you care about the vulnerable. But the member for Viewport South, as Prime Minister, exempted and zero rated over 100 items. So you could have brought it down to zero, it wouldn't make a difference. Because the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister, the member for Viewport South, took the necessary steps to ensure, and that is the only jurisdiction in the OECS, and among the few in the Caribbean with such a spectrum of zero-rated, unexempted items. Not even the best political liar can refute that. This is not subject to debate nor compromise, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am returning again to this brilliant shot by a man of conscience, a man of compassion, the leader, of the Labour Party and Prime Minister of this country, the Honorable Philip Joseph Pierre. The increase should be viewed within the context of the current pensions that some of our pensioners receive. In this regard, Mr. Speaker, it was pointed out by the Minister for Finance, the Honorable Member for Caswis East, some pensioners receive as little as $300. It will, he will not sleep good at night knowing that this morbid scenario continues to prevail in this country. He is not just complaining about it, he's doing something about it, Mr. Speaker. This increase should therefore be a significant one for those pensioners and will go a long way in assisting them, Mr. Speaker, in meeting the expenses, especially for those pensioners who do not have other financial means or support to supplement the pensions. Mr. Speaker, the government continues to put our people first and forms part of a wider strategic goal of our government to provide support to the financially disadvantaged in our society and make their lives better. Mr. Speaker, our government has also announced its intention to implement a minimum wage, as you heard from the member for Caswis South East. The Minimum and Equal Wages Commission has made a recommendation and is now seeking comments on this minimum wage. You see how we do things, Mr. Speaker? We consult. 
We do not just come and implement things. We consult with the people. The commission has put it out there, and of course, it will be subjected to public ventilation. And then we are going to make a final determination on this matter at the appropriate time. The recommendations from the commission, Mr. Speaker, is a minimum wage of $1,126 per month, or $6.50 per hour. In addition, Mr. Speaker, the government has undertaken a major reform of the income tax structure, resulting in an increase in the personal income tax allowance from $18,000 per annum to $25,000 per annum, and reducing the number of income tax bans from four to three, Mr. Speaker. This tax reform measure is significant particularly to low-income earners, and it means, it means that anyone earning up to $2,083 monthly will pay no income tax, resulting in an additional 15,000 persons in this country paying no income tax. That's brilliant. So I understand why you all want to change the subject, because it's a painful truth. It's a painful truth. We are on the way to a next victory. Victory via performance and commitment to the people of this country and our promise to put them first. The personal income tax allowance combined with the restructuring of the income tax bans has resulted in two thirds of St. Lucians paying less income tax. This, Mr. Speaker, will result in an increase in the disposable incomes of those individuals, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is also important to note that the NIC, acting on the request from the government, has also agreed to increase the minimum pension to $500 per month, effective August 1st, 2024. As a result, Mr. Speaker, approximately 2,400 pensioners will benefit from this increase. That's why they have to make it look as if this is not what's going on in this house, but change the subject and go to fuel prices and go to other things to try to contaminate things and to cause the people of this country to search through the rubble of the propaganda to find the truth. But we are committed, Mr. Speaker, for our patriotic missiles to deal with the propaganda and the misinformation. Mr. Speaker, it is also important to note that the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance stated in his budget address for the fiscal year 2024-2025 that government stated the way forward for pension payments in the future as follows. I quote, Government pension payments in the future will be linked to union agreed negotiated salary increases for civil servants, but not beyond the covered period of those negotiated settlements." Unquote. This can be found on page 72 of the budget speech, Mr. Speaker. So it's not just a one-time thing of bringing them up to that level, but as there are increases in the, the salaries of, of public officers, we are going to ensure that those pensioners do not again fall behind. Mr. Speaker, I wish to note that pension payments accounted for $95,993,711 in fiscal year 2023-2024. The reference for this, Mr. Speaker, is page 301 of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for the fiscal year 2024-2025 in the column revised estimates 2023-2024. This amount, Mr. Speaker, is significant and is reflective of the demographic shifts in the public service in which an increasing number of public servants are retiring and the life expectancy has increased. 
Notwithstanding this, Mr. Speaker, there is no structured framework in place for increasing pensions in the public service. Increases have taken place in an ad hoc manner, and I believe too infrequently, Mr. Speaker. As a result, many pensioners have suffered a decline in their real income as the cost of living has increased. Mr. Speaker, the proposal outlined by the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance will put in place a more structured framework for granting pension increases. So therefore, Mr. Speaker, having stated this so boldly, and the facts in a very categorical fashion in this honorable house, no individual in this house can insulate the conscience from what is being done here. If you have a conscience, you will support it unconditionally. Because we are supposed to be in this house collectively to represent the interests of the people of this country and to elevate the living conditions. And as I prepare to close, Mr. Speaker, I wish to say to you that we are not going to take advice from members opposite. Persons who actually push down the legitimate interests and needs of the people of this country to deeper depths of insecurity and misery. We are putting people first. We are not taking money that, that would benefit the people of this country and go and pay horses. We're not going to engage in no kind of fly-by-night operation and leave the people of this country starving. And you all can criticize all you all want. From now until resurrection, we shall remain on the path of bread, justice, and freedom. And like the Spanish would say, la lucha continua. Hasta la victoria siempre. Venceremos. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.